Would you like to move on? Yes. Because there's there really one other match we're going to talk about, and then I've got to see if you watch something. But Dax and Danielson. And this was for 20 minutes. And they do this every once in a while. But for 20 minutes, this television program looked like the Major League Wrestling Show. Not only did it have a personality that people have seen in the WWE that has been the champion that is known around the world, Brian Danielson, that's in great shape and can go and is serious. But Dax, who is, as I've mentioned the other day, you know, you, sometimes we forget about him because he and FTR are so hidden here because of the jealousy of the EVPs. But Dax is the best worker on the roster. In the ring, tag team, single, heel, baby face, anybody. He's the best. And be honest, if we got to see Cash ever have a singles match, he'd probably be right close. But I, has everybody seen how ridiculous this is at this point? Where Dax loses singles matches to everybody in the company, while at the same time, they're the best wrestling match you've seen since the last time that Dax had a singles match, but he's never won one. And Cash never gets to work at all in a singles match. Every once in a while, they have a, a tag team match together, but most of the time in AEW, it's a six-man or an eight-man or an underneath match or a pre-taped interview. They have all their great tag team matches in other companies somewhere else in the world. They got every other company's tag team title that means something in those companies but are completely meaningless in this environment. And the apologists are still acting like that this is not intentional, that anybody could be so stupid that they, they get talent on their roster that start earning standing ovations from the crowd just for making their entrance and... People are still trying to say they're not being held down on purpose. And I got news for you. Yes, the rule of thumb in wrestling. And a lot of these things are repeated to people like Tony with no experience or people like some of these younger wrestlers with no frame of reference or context to how to take these things. Well, singles guys always beat tag team guys, but tag team guys would beat two single guys in a tag team match because they're tag team specialists. Within a point, you are true, all things being equal. That's why Ric Flair beat Bobby Eaton, right? But at the same time, Bobby Eaton didn't get beaten in every single match he ever had, or did Stan Lane or Dennis Condry. They still beat everybody but the main event fucking baby faces if they were in a single match. And then if they were in a single match, it was part of their program. It was Bobby versus Ricky Morton or Stan versus Robert Gibson. Or uh, Dusty used to break the midnight up every once in a while to go after the U.S. heavyweight title. Yes, they would do a job to Dusty Rhodes or Nikita Koloff. But if uh, I think you would probably find if you did the record books that the Midnight Express, whenever they had a singles match on television won 90% of them and then did the occasional job in a title match. And it's, it's the same way with... You can't do this this way and expect anybody to take your tag team champion seriously. Or your top tag team, since they're not the champions. Because the Bucks ran out on putting the belts on them. So the crowd was chanting, this is awesome before the lockup of a guy who only gets to do jobs on this television program intermittently, Dax Harwood. The level of professionalism from both these guys, from bell to bell, was higher than most of the people in AEW can match on their best day. I had one complaint about the match, and you called it. Dax hit a beautiful pile driver, covered him, got a two count. And besides there actually being no heel in this match, because people love Brian Danielson and people love FTR, so why book it? Oh, I know why to book it. Because a Mark booking in his basement for an E-Fed 
would think that it would be cool to have this great wrestling match on their imitation, fictitious television program. There's no business reason to have this. Brian Danielson didn't get any more over. And Dax certainly didn't. And yes, you're trying to get ratings on television, so give them a good match. Well, then how about every once in a while, whoever's in a program with FTR or Danielson, they run out and cause a disqualification to further your goddamn issue and try to make money with it. Oh, I forgot. Neither of these guys is in a program because none of Tony Khan's main event guys are in programs and rivalries. They just intermittently wrestle people for no fucking reason. So if there were about 10 other guys on in this company that could work like these two guys, they would look like the better wrestling show over WWE easily, even the, with the production difference in production values. But they had a great back and forth match. People were with it. They loved everything. Finally, Dax got a sharpshooter and pulled on the knee pad, got a little subtle heel advantage. And then they went into a series of jackknife false finishes back and forth. Boom, boom, boom. And out of nowhere, Danielson got the LaBelle lock and Dax tapped out in a finished. I've never seen a match that good and professional to have a finish that fucking flat. Just grabbed the hold on him and he tapped out. There's, again, no build, no edge of your seat roller coaster ride. It was some roll-ups. They tried. But this is what modern wrestling is because everybody's a, everybody has to either have a heel versus heel match or a babyface versus babyface match. They're afraid of a disqualification to actually try to increase their business. Um, everybody's afraid of getting beat and looking weak so they suffer through 87 million big moves and then get beat with a sunset flip. And the finish comes out of nowhere because reasons. I don't know why. And then both guys shook hands and hugged. What'd you think, Brian? You kind of hit on some of my biggest issues with the overall concept of the match. As a match itself, it was good. If I had 50 of the hottest young prospects in wrestling at a training seminar, then I would send these two guys in the ring in front of that audience, professionals, to say this is an example of something you should aspire to. Put it on television to increase my business. I don't see how it did. You brought it up with Dax. Dax never cashed. Dax always has these singles matches. He never wins any of them, but we all go into him with the same feeling. Oh, this is going to be a great match because Dax is in it. And every time, technically, it's a great match. But not one person watched that match and didn't know that Danielson was going to win. Right. And that's the problem. And again, if you're going to use Dax and Cash is there, unless Cash has a hernia or something we don't know about, have them in a fucking tag match. No, he he walked out on in street clothes on the ramp and shook Dax's hand and then went back inside and we never saw him again. If this match was booked just to get that crowd reaction, because I can't think you book a match like this and think, oh, this match with no background other than the two great wrestlers will get people really to tune in. Put FTR on a tag match. They bring the house down everywhere they go, but we don't get yeah. that. This match, this match was to please the choir. They were already there. The viewer, th this match was great for the people that were already going to watch this program. The people are already in the building, but it was neither built or uh, enough import was not invested in it or uh, any story whatsoever or anything to make anybody that, didn't already just want it like us. Oh, gosh, we'll actually get to see two guys that can work on this program. That's the only reason we were up in arms to watch it. How many people felt that way? Hey, I'll tell you what. I don't think they should have Danielson wrestle on TV for a while. If they're going to do something with him and MJF, it's the perfect time to take a break from the formula so he can get on the mic, joust back and forth with MJF. Who knows what they'll argue about. It'll probably be something other than a Regal just to make everyone forget about Regal. There has to be something there. Danielson was getting really good on the mic as a heel about a year ago. So I don't think they should have Daniel. I think we've seen him wrestle too much on TV in meaningless matches. You know what? The there last is something. Several months. 
what about since the knock on MJF and Moxley was like, well, he never wrestles. And, and MJF says, because when I do, you got to pay for it. What about if Danielson was to try to do the same thing? Well, I don't need to wrestle either. And I'm going to be in great shape. Nobody's going to tell you. We see videos of Danielson <laughs> not only training, but also just resting and relaxing and nobody's beating him up. And MJF gets mad. No, he's got to go through so-and-so. I ain't wrestling. He's got to go through such-and-such guy. I ain't going to wrestle him. That might be something, but at least it would create some more hunger to see Brian wrestle again. Uh, it, like you said, I don't know. 